Good morning, I'm Margaret Larson. Welcome to New Day Northwest. We have a special announcement for you about the future of our show a little bit later, so stay tuned for that. But first up today, a memoir just came out this morning. It is giving us a frank perspective into addiction and what goes into a battle against it. Quitter, a memoir on drinking, relapse, and recovery is written by Seattle journalist Erica Barnett, and we got a chance to speak with her about what writing this was really like. The time I had written this book, I had really come to terms, I think, with a lot of the stuff that I cover. And you're right. I mean, somebody reading this would be like, wow, she really didn't pull back. Um, you would be amazed at the stuff I cut out, um, just because it started to feel a little bit repetitive and relentless. So writing the book, I mean, there were cathartic elements to it because there were things that I had never sort of thought about that in that compact a form and and you know, whittled it down and just sort of thought about what, what all my experiences meant to me. But by the time I wrote the book, I was pretty far away from the shame that I felt when I was going through those experiences. So it, uh, you know, and it also felt like if I do pull punches about myself, I'm always going to get in trouble. You know, it's, it's always the best policy to be as honest as possible in a memoir, because there are people who were there, they remember too. Right. Well, I mean, I could definitely feel your sense of freedom. Uh, everybody pretty much talks about the shame that comes with addiction. It's honestly, you know, something a lot of people feel for a lot of reasons, and it's always a huge, huge burden, maybe one of the most toxic things we can feel. But we also see you work through all the stuff that you need to to free yourself from that. So ultimately, you know, I felt like I walked in your shoes a bit, and that's what a memoir should do. Yeah, I really wanted to give the sense, especially to people who have, you know, have experienced their own struggles with addiction or know people who've struggled with addiction, which is pretty much everybody, you know, in 2020. I wanted them to, I wanted readers to feel a sense of the lifting of shame that happened over the course of the events in this book and over the course of the past five and a half years that I've been sober. Um, it has been a continual process. And, um, and I think it's really the most important and the most amazing thing about getting sober and making amends to people and doing the work that you have to do because it really is a form of work. Um, you know, I want people to know that there is another side, like you do come out and things are better, but, um, and, and the biggest part of that is getting rid of that shame. And better not only for you, but for your family and your friends whose relief was very palpable in the book as well. And you touch on a couple of places, I think, some specific ways in which drinking and alcoholism affect girls and women. Can you talk about that a little bit? I think that um, especially in the last 20 years or so, more girls are drinking young than were doing that when I was a kid in the 90s. I, was drink I started drinking at 13, which was extremely young at the time. Now that is extremely typical. Um, and I think that is in part because of alcohol marketing. It's marketed heavily to women in a way that it wasn't when I was a kid. And um, in part just because girls are sort of catching up to boys in all sorts of ways, good and bad. Boys have always been, you know, sort of part of the macho culture of drinking, um, which, you know, says that it's a cool thing to do when you're a teenager or a young adult. Um, but I think girls are being given, as we're sort of being given, quote unquote, permission to participate in more mm -hmm. aspects of society, we're also being given permission and encouraged by marketing to, to drink more. And the fact is, girls can't drink as much as men because of the way, and, and women can't either, uh, without having more uh, bad effects because of the way that our bodies are composed. So we're trying to drink with men, we're trying to keep up with men, at least I know that I did, and we're seeing much more significant health impacts just because of the physiology of right. a woman's body. It seems really important because, you know, girls 12, 13, 14 are battling, you know, identity questions and insecurities and alcohol can be a salve for that. And we're also seeing all of these t-shirts about how fun it is to be a mom drinker or a day drinker or whatever. And um, there's more to know about it than that it's fun. And 
I think you give us a pretty good view of that. You also give us a view of you as a journalist and the sorts of topics you're interested in and how your experiences inform the choices you make about the stories you cover and the way you think about things, even things as you know seemingly dry as a budget, what that means to real people. Can you tell me a bit more on that topic? I think that you know it has really given me a bigger sense or a closer sense of my own privilege as a person. I mean, I grew up as somebody who really um, had parents who are very bootstraps oriented. Um, and I am sort of the same way, although I am a pretty politically liberal person, my parents are not. Um, I, I really thought that I had kind of earned everything on my own. And when I saw people and when I meet people who are really experiencing um, the kind of hardships and struggles that people who are homeless, um, people just, just in general, people who are vulnerable and disadvantaged, I see more clearly now um, that all along the way, there was so much, there were so many systems propping me up. I mean, the fact that I, um, you know, look the way I do and I, I come across as a certain race, social class, gender, I was not, nobody ever bothered me. I mean, I could sit and drink on a bus and no one would blink an eye. Whereas, you know, I've seen people get their briefcases, I mean, their bags searched on the bus for no reason, just for being black and looking a little quote unquote sketchy. So um, I think it has given me a really keen uh, sense of just how both lucky and privileged I've been. And it's, uh, it's made me write, I think, with more empathy toward people who don't have those advantages. Well, I'm really gr glad that you wrote this book, and I think you did a wonderful job. And I have not walked in those shoes, but you made me see some things in a new way, and I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thanks, Erica. Bye.